moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till Jesus calls. To I'm the knowledge of his word. And that knowledge of, it, of his word and that adherence to his word and living according to that word, because you know you are going to be judged by your works, brings about persecution. So it says, I have given them that word and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. When it comes to behavior, brothers and sisters, when it comes to this word, we have to come out of Babylon. We have to come out of the world. We cannot do what everybody in the world does. And we realize that once we come into the truth, but if the world is upside down and we turn right side up, we look upside down to the rest of the world. And it brings about persecution. It brings about being mocked. But that is what the Lord is telling you, you'll have to go through. Paul said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So in verse 15, it says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Okay? So what is he saying? You don't have to come out of the world. You can't, you can't literally come out of the world, but you can't do what the world does. And he says, you're going to pray that the Lord will keep you from the evil. He said, because they are not of the world, in verse 16, even as I am not of the world. So that's what I mean when you say you got to come out of the world in that sense. You can't be of the world. All right? And that's how you know that most people don't know God because they are of the world. Even though they claim and profess to be Christians, they are of the world and do what everybody else of the world does. Or they do something that is totally contrary to God's word and profess holiness. They are holy according to the tradition and doctrines of men and not God. 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. See, you have people that say, they claim to be sanctified. And they base their sanctification not on God's word. I'm not saying all of them, but some of them base their sanctification not on God's word, but on the traditions of man. On the traditions of man. They have these things that they profess makes them holy, but it's not in God's word. Okay? So he says, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is true. The word of God is what sanctifies you and it also causes you to be hated. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians and see an example of this. This is Paul in his epistle to the Thessalonians. Listen to what he says in the second chapter. Second chapter and verse, verse 9. He says, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 9, he says, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for labor in night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. Okay, so he says, remember how we preached to you and how we labor for the gospel's sake. Verse 10, he says, ye are witnesses and God also. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. So they had a certain type of behavior that was godly. Verse 11. As ye know, know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. So they instructed them on the way they should go. This is what Paul is telling the Thessalonians. And that's what a preacher will do to you. He, for you. He will instruct you in the way in which you should go. He won't condone your nonsense. He won't condone your sin. He won't condone your bad behavior. He is going to correct you according to the word of God. And on top of that, he's going to have a certain type of behavior. He can't be a hypocrite. He's going to be the first partaker of that fruit. He's going to live godly so that he can show other people how to live godly. Twelve, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Thirteen, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. See, that word of God is working in you. It's changing you. You are changing as a person when you get the word of God in you. That see, the word of God is planted in you. That water washes your brain and you walk a new walk. You talk a different talk. You act in a different way. Verse 14, for ye brethren... Became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered 
like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. All right, so we read about Paul's sufferings at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. And now he's saying what happened to the Thessalonians? They also suffer of their own countrymen. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Verse 15, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Lord, rising up early, send prophets throughout the ages to Israel. Throughout the years, send prophets to warn the people. To shake them out of their sin. And these prophets were persecuted. They were despised. They were rejected. They were killed. And then he said, you know what? I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send my son. And they said, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And that's just what they did. And if he came back in the same manner today, they would kill him again. Because for the most part, people do not want to believe or bring themselves into subjection to the word of God. They want to cut the cords asunder. They want to have no connection to God. All right? Even in the church. But you have some. Again, I said it's a phenomenon. You have some that are starting to wake up. And the reason that this is occurring now is because we are living in the last days. Now, I've said it, and most people say, well, people have been saying that for years. People scoff and mock, but when you look at the signs, read the signs. Of the times. Read Matthew the 24th chapter in its entirety. Read Revelation. These things are on the horizon. When you hear wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquake, and disease. When you read about the abomination of desolation. Standing in a holy place. It says, who so read and understand. What you need to understand is that the whole, there are plans to build that holy place or third temple as we speak. All of the Artifacts, instruments that are needed. They even have a model of this temple. They have cornerstones for this temple. They have everything they need. The menorah, everything they need for this temple. Even so-called Levitical priests to sacrifice in this temple. See, these are the things that are on the horizon. And we are. that's, what, that's how we know we're living in the last days. And that people need to, they starting to understand, they need to wake up. People are starting to understand, they're coming up out of their sleep. Because we are approaching the second coming of Jesus. Alright? So, it says, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all. Okay? So this is what happened. This is what happened to, Thessalon to the Thessalonians, but what caused it? We read in John the 17th chapter, I have given them thy word, and the word hath, world hath hated them. Here we read in 1 Thessalonians that again it is the word of God that, that's working in you, that causes you to be hated, even of your own country. Alright? Even not just people of your own nation, but your close familiars. But let's let, let's see this. Let's go to Jeremiah the 20th chapter. Let's go to Jeremiah the 20th chapter. And see what he, this prophet, this great prophet of the Lord had to say. This is Jeremiah 20 and 7. It says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Some of you may be mocked daily. Why? For the word of God. V verse 8. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Why was he mocked? Why, what was a derision to him daily? It was the word of God. What gave him, caused him to be a reproach, despised and rejected? It was the word. He cried and he spake as he was moved by the spirit of God. He had the word of God in him so much so that he wrote it down for our benefit. And yet when he brought it to his own, they mocked him. It says in verse 9, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Talking about God. It says, But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. So, people often quote this. They say, The word was a fire in Jeremiah's bones, but they don't ever talk about the person.